So welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Heligoland Bite. This is the fourth and final Turning Tides map to be revealed, and it's one of two coming in January as part of the North Sea Update. This is a true, proper attempt by the developers to incorporate naval warfare into Battlefield 1, alongside the other map, Zeebrugge, but I have to say that this map is even more focused on it than Zeebrugge is. Now I got to play this map last night in a closed test on the CTE version of Battlefield 1 with various other community members and I thought I'd give my opinions and thoughts on the map before it's released to the public later this week. This map is based off of the real life location of the same name and it is the site of a few different naval battles during World War 1, one in 1914 and the other in 1917, both times between the British and German forces. And it features a huge expanse of open water surrounding two islands, one smaller than the other. The main island features sheer cliffs with lots of rocky outcrops at the base, a grounded German U-boat sits at the far end of the larger island, and diagonally across from that sits a beach landing location defended by barbed wire, a bunker and a massive fortress gun. The smaller island also features a bunker system with trenches, but it's much flatter overall, it doesn't feature any cliffs whatsoever. In between both of these islands is a grounded ship and that acts as a flag point in the conquest assault mode. Around that land it is just simply open water. Conquest Assault pits the British against the Germans in a similar fashion to the British fighting the Ottomans at Gallipoli on the Cape Hells map. The Germans start with all five flags captured and the British need to advance in Y landing craft, torpedo boats, planes and destroyers to try and capture these points from the Germans. Of course the Germans have their own aircraft too, their own boats as well, essentially mimicking the British, but they also have the opportunity to spawn as infantry soldiers directly onto the flags from the very start of the round. Now the A flag, closest to the British spawn, that sits right at the head of Heligoland and it incorporates this lighthouse here and it's surrounded by open water and sizeable rocks. This presents some good cover for infantry who might be shooting explosives at passing boats but it's next to useless if a plane decides to strafe past. That said, with the skybox on this map being so open, barely anything getting in the way of you seeing incoming aircraft, it is easy to fire shots at those planes and potentially warn them off. Compared to A flag, B flag is much more protected. Here you've got a small network of trenches and barbed wire protecting a large fortress gun and a bunker that sits right on the edge of a landing beach. The fortress gun is an asset that you'll want to protect as it can deal massive damage against incoming boats and destroyers but it is vulnerable from a bombing run over the top. C flag as I mentioned is a beached or destroyed warship of some kind, not 100% sure if the model currently in place will be the final one, all of this stuff is subject to change but the flag actually houses an AA cannon on top of the ship and that can be quite strategic to use against planes that are looking to strafe the B or D flags. The D flag has its own bunker and it sits down on the lower of the two islands and it's contained to just one side of that island as well. There is no other objective point on that second island. This one can also be captured from the water and the zone is large enough to actually fit a destroyer into it which means that vehicle can have a direct influence on the outcome of a match. The flag however is again extremely open like the A flag and that means aerial attacks are much harder to defend against. There is an AA cannon in this location but it's set back from the capture zone a little bit and that means you need to decide if you want to hold on to the point directly or if you want to be the one getting rid of the threat. 
And finally, we have E-Flag. This is probably the most isolated on the map, but it does feature a grounded German U-Boat, which is a nice touch. It's not enterable at this time, and I'm not sure it will be, but it does offer a lot of cover from aerial attacks, and you can use it depending on which way the plane is coming at you. This is also the location on the map where the Tank Hunter Elite Kit spawns on the beach at the base of the cliffs. You might be thinking, Tank Hunter, naval map with no tanks. Well, you should be using it against boats instead. It is actually possible to run all the way along the base of the cliffs from the E-Flag all the way to A-Flag. Although I wouldn't advise it. It's over a 500 meter run and you're probably going to get picked off by a boat that's passing by you. Outside of those flag points, there's just a huge amount of open water here within the combat zone that you can use. And I feel that's to encourage more of the boat versus boat combat that's been somewhat lacking in Battlefield 1 up until this Turning Tides DLC. Now you might remember in Battlefield 4, the game launched with Paracel Storm, which is arguably one of the best maps in the game, and it combined a lot of different aspects about what made Battlefield 4 really, really good. Here on Heligoland Bight though, there's just something severely lacking about the boat combat. I personally think the balance needs to be looked at because the rock, paper, scissors mentality where anything you use can counter something else and should be just as powerful in different ways against a different object, that mentality is just all skew whiff at the moment and that's due to some inherent issues with the game. The Y landing craft are essentially transport vehicles on water, which is totally fine. They can't really defend themselves all that much, apart from maybe picking off some infantry on the shores with their mounted machine guns. The torpedo boats, they can destroy those Y landing craft pretty damn fast with their torpedoes and cannons. It's when the destroyer enters the battle that things kind of get messy. The destroyer can take down a torpedo boat in two shots from one of its cannons and there are multiple cannon positions on the destroyer. If the torpedo boat sits in range, it's going to explode before the captain even knows what's happening. Now, why landing craft? They just don't stand a chance either and the captain of the destroyer can self-repair if he does take any damage and the self-repair is just as quick as if you were sitting in a much, much smaller tank on land or even the torpedo boats. The timer to self-repair doesn't change depending on how big the vehicle is. I think that's a big issue in Battlefield 1. And then there's the planes. Once the planes start to attack the destroyer, they can chunk its health down so fast it's just unreal. The defender is extremely powerful against all different types of boats and infantry on the shore, but they really have very little way of defending themselves from an aerial attack. I witnessed a bomber and a fighter combined together and they brought down a destroyer in one strafe last night during the test, which is just unbelievably quick. These planes can take plenty of hits from AA cannons and plenty of shots from infantry from people firing their primary weapons at them and they survive with a wooden hull. But the destroyer ends up sinking from a couple of bombs and a stray from a cannon and that thing is made out of solid metal. It just doesn't sit quite right with me. Despite this map seemingly being primed and ready for a mix of naval and aerial combat, I mean we've got a really historically important setting here I don't actually feel that Battlefield 1's naval combat and aerial combat mix together very well. It's not been done in the game before, at least to this scale, and it seems clear to me that the balance between all of the boats and all of the planes is something that needs to be worked on before this map will become a great stage to host those battles. But with the map due to drop in a month or so in January 2018, I'm not 100% confident that considerable balance changes between these planes and these boats will actually happen by that point. I mean, if you simply compare the combat of Heligoland Bight here in Battlefield 1 to that of Paracel Storm in Battlefield 4 with its storm effects and wave physics, for me, Paracel Storm wins every single time. That map highlighted the boat combat, how they could interact with infantry on the ground, and how they could interact with the jets and the helicopters as they were weaving around above the battle, mixing everything up. Heligoland Bight, by comparison, felt very static, quite bland, and for me, fairly uninteresting in its current form. 
Boat combat had no depth at all, planes were easily lining up strafes, and infantry, frankly, they could just sit by the wayside of all of that going on and just capture objectives easily. That said, they did fall victim to planes as well, who might decide to focus on them for a few seconds or so, but the two types of combat, vehicle and infantry, they felt very, very disconnected, even more so than on some other maps that are also included in Battlefield 1. I think we can all come to the conclusion here that Battlefield 1 is more infantry focused than previous Battlefield titles. If you're going to make a vehicle based map in an infantry focused game, then you need to make sure that your vehicle combat is fun and engaging and connects to the infantry combat that people are still playing this game for. And at the moment, the planes and the boats could have a totally separate fight to the infantry who are running around on the shorelines. And that for me just highlights at the moment that this map is not ready to be pushed out to the public. However, there are a couple of suggestions that I'd like to make that I think could improve this map. One of them I've already alluded to, bring back wave physics from Battlefield 4, if it's technically possible, to bring more life into the boat versus boat combat and just get rid of the flat sea that is dominating this map at the moment. For me, that section of it, all that water, is completely wasted. It's so uninteresting. And it might actually give some power back to the torpedo boats as well. Let me explain. Those waves could actually change the trajectory of the boats and that would make bombing runs and strafes by planes much harder to execute, but not impossible. A skilled pilot would still be able to land those shots. It would also give the torpedo boats much more cover against the destroyers and not allow direct line of sight all the time across a flat sea. Adding a bit more skill to the battles out there in the water could go a long way to making this map just feel much more alive all of the time. And secondly, I'd love to see DICE add a tunnel system under the bigger of the two islands. There is actually a tunnel system present in the real life Heligoland bite and having a bigger area for infantry to battle it out would be a nice addition. It's not as important as improving the naval combat and improving the aerial combat against those boats, but it would be a nice addition nonetheless. At the moment, I'm not 100% sure what to think of Heligoland Bight. It is a vast, stunning map, and I'm sure it will look even better when DICE texture it all up, but I feel the highlight feature, which is of course naval combat, is just sorely lacking in depth and is in desperate need of improvement if this map is to impress. And that's not to mention the other map, Zeebrugger, is also naval combat focused. If both of these maps launch with subpar naval combat, I don't think players are going to be very happy. But thank you very much for watching today, and when you guys get access to this map on the CTE in a day or so, I'd love to hear what you think down below in the comments, or maybe just give me some responses from what you've heard me talking about today. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.